The future of getting from here to there has become an all-out drag race. Rideshare startup Lyft was born in the city by the bay and has raised more than $2 billion since 2013 to innovate how people move in nearly 200 cities. Will recent high-profile investments change your commute forever? While we're out here in San Francisco for our countdown to the Super Bowl kickoff, I think it's worth checking in with local companies right in the heart of Silicon Valley that are transforming the way we live. I'm talking about companies like Lyft, the ride-sharing play that's second only to Uber in size. You've probably seen their signature pink mustaches on cars in your neighborhood if you're not already a customer. Lyft is one of these highly valued, privately held companies that we tend to refer to as unicorns. And lately, the environment has gotten a lot more difficult for these mythical creations. <laughs> However, this is one unicorn that may actually deserve this positive appellation, given that Lyft has a presence in 190 cities, roughly 7 million riders per month, and the most important, they've got the fastest growth in the industry. And they got plenty of money, by the way. They don't need to come public. Now, earlier today, I got a chance to chat with Lyft's president and co-founder, John Zimmer. Take a look. All right, John, whenever I read about you, I always hear it's Lyft versus Uber. I'm thinking that's entirely the wrong story. It's millennials versus guys like me. Tell me. Yeah, that's fair. I think uh, Lyft is winning three to one with millennials, uh, and millennials don't want to own a car anymore. So uh, I think we're focused on the right segment. All right, well, look, 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 I turned 16, okay, from yeah. Pennsylvania. Uh, the day I turned 16, I went to the motor vehicles department because that's what you did. I, I, am I uh, atavistic? Uh, it's changing. So for the first time, uh, ever, the, the percent of 19-year-olds uh, that get a license dropped under 70%. It's at 69% now. But it's a writ de passage. How did that go away? I think now the, the phone is really the freedom, okay. and the car is more of a burden. You have to deal with parking, you have to deal with tickets uh, and, and maintenance, and instead now you, with Lyft, you can just tap a button and get where you need to go whenever you want. Well, then theoretically, the idea that there's Lyft versus Uber is a false dichotomy. There could be a lot of different players, or more alternatively, there's room for both. Yeah, the, the market is, uh, every year in the United States, $2 trillion is spent on car ownership, and the car is utilized 4% of the time. It's incredibly inefficient. And so there's a massive opportunity to replace car ownership uh, with transportation as a service. All right, Jeff, when I listen to you, I immediately think, well, wait a second, GM invested $500 million with you as a bit of a hedge versus their business, as opposed to the possibility that you're going to come public and they're going to make a fortune. Uh, well, I think uh, they're excited about Lyft as an investment, but they're also interested in, in what we're going to do together. So two things. One is rental hubs. So drivers, one of their largest expenses is the car itself. Oh, no kidding. And uh, now they had access to GM vehicles across the country at a, at a great affordable rate. We're going to be rolling that out over the next few months. And the second thing is autonomous. So in the future, uh, a few years from now, we're going to be working with them on autonomous vehicles, which we believe is the future of transportation. Uh, Google just reported, uh, now Alphabet, uh, this autonomous, now they're talking about 1.7 million uh, miles that they put on. I mean, the, this is something that is not uh, 2022. This may be 2017? Yeah, I think you're going to start seeing trials in the next couple of years, uh, and then it will roll out year, year over year. And, uh, you know, what's, what's interesting and exciting is that for the first time ever, uh, Lyft, a, a rideshare company, has partnered with a car manufacturer. So, you know, in order to bring this to reality, we're going to need uh, that type of relationship, and we're the only ones that have that right now. But I think it's important also in terms of investors to see Prince Alawid, who's a, someone I, I followed his career all, all my life. He, he doesn't make a lot of wrong bets. That's right. How'd you get to him? Uh, so uh, they actually reached out to us. They did. Um, it was uh, kind of around the time we were closing the last round with with Icon and, and Rakuten, right. uh, and uh, we, we went over there, met with him, uh, and he, he was excited and interested in, in what we were doing. Same thing with Icon? Yeah, uh, actually, Icon... Well, he's got a lot of people who work. work Icon was more, more us. We actually approached uh, him uh, through, through one of his team members, uh, then got to meet with Carl and, and, and learned that you know, as he, he looked through the numbers, he saw a really exciting investment opportunity. Uh, he tried the service a few times himself in New York, talked to the drivers, and, and saw that uh, Lyft was a great investment. All right, so w what is the difference between Lyft and Uber, if you had to look at it, besides the fact that it's possible that maybe you guys are making money, because I know they're losing money. Yeah, so number one, we're focused on the United States right now, okay. which is the most profitable, uh, largest opportunity. Uh, and we treat people better. And All right, now that, that's going to be subjective, because yeah. Travis, he's going to say, that, that, you know, give me some metrics. What does yeah, yeah. treat so people let's better talk, mean? Let's talk about it. So okay. for, for driver's side, uh, we do a few key things. One, we, have, we allow tips on the platform. This has led to over $60 million in tips to, to drivers. They don't, the other company doesn't allow tips uh, through the app. The right. second thing we've done is power driver bonus. Uh, so 
the drivers that drive the most can earn back parts of their commission. This has led to nearly $40 million, so almost $100 million in additional uh, income for the drivers on our platform. Uh, and, then, and the third thing is, by, by creating a culture of treating people better, uh, we, we start adding features like express pay, where a driver can get paid same day. So, you know, and then, and then we have great passengers who treat drivers better. At the end of the day, when you have uh, services that you can get a ride within three minutes, prices are uh, approximately the same, service really matters. And when drivers are happy using our platform because they make more money uh, and they're treated better, uh, they provide better service to our customers. Do you have any evidence of switching from Uber drivers to Lyft drivers? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, Just eight, out of ten, eight out of 10 drivers prefer driving on Lyft uh, when, you know, and asking Well, then if that's the case, then uh, the valuation of, uh, of Uber, which is 10 times yours, uh, would seem fanciful. I mean, if you look at, so Lyft is just about three years old. If you okay. look at where they were in their three-year point, our valuation is higher than, than was what theirs was at the time. Okay. Uh, so it took us a few years to build up the, the technology uh, and the scale within the U.S., and, and now we're, we're moving really fast. All right, let, let's talk about the, what the autonomous car looks like. Uh, why do I need you if I have an autonomous car? So what we, we believe, as well does General Motors, is that autonomous cars will be introduced through a network. You actually won't need to own a vehicle. So thinking about the fact that a vehicle okay. is utilized only 4% of the time, uh, and we can buy that you know, more expensive asset, or General Motors can own that more expensive asset, and it be deployed through the network, you can then order a variety of different transportation experiences. So when you start you know, designing a vehicle, uh, that doesn't need a driver. You start thinking, what are you gonna? What experience are we gonna offer you on your? I want to the work? TV. I don't know. I, Perfect. Honest, I may want the bar in the back. I'm not kidding. You can. You, I think there I, will I mean, be <laughs> autonomous bars, uh, and people will be coming home watching sports games, uh, having a drink, and oh, and, uh, and that's something you won't own. Okay. Now, uh, because you just raised money, you obviously don't need money, and you've got some deep pockets. So, are you gonna go the traditional venture capital route, which is just to go full out for scale and not worry about? Uh, making money, or do you always have to worry about if one day maybe Wall Street will become friendly at IPOs, and you have to show a little bit of the possibility of profitability? Uh, I think you you got to find that the middle, the right middle ground, okay. which is you know for the next couple of years we're going to be very aggressive because the opportunity of addressing this two trillion dollar car ownership market is massive, uh, and so we want we want to lean into that, uh, and our investors want us to lean into that. At the same time, we with the capital we've raised today, we have a path to profitability and. Uh, and, and we'll hit that at the right point. And, and anything involving government regulation, labor that makes it so that uh, Lyft's better than Uber? Uh, I think I think the companies are in a, a similar place. Um, drivers uh, on our platform really uh, like the flexibility they have. Eighty percent of drivers on our platform drive under fifteen hours. So that might be one difference. Is that yes. uh, there's more casual drivers on the on the Lyft platform. Uh, this could be in LA. A lot of actors and actresses instead right. of being right. a waiter or waitress are now driving on Lyft. There's more social experience between driver and passenger, and so I think it appeals to a different set of people. Well, I got to tell you, I'm so thrilled you're with me. I know to come out to San Francisco is really the only way to do this. I hope you will be a regular on Mad Money. It is really we'll exciting to, to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, that's John Zimmer. the co-founder and president of Lyft. We're out here because of stories like this. We're just not going to get them in New York. Stay with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.